Welcome back to our little handmade home, a place where we transform houses into cozy little homes one handmade project at a time. My name is Tanya, I am the creator and founder of Our Little Handmade Home, and today I am diving into the wonderfully amazing world of quilts. Whether you're a complete beginner or someone looking to enhance their quilting skills, you've come to the right place. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite tips and tricks that will help set you on the path to becoming a confident quilter. So let's get started. Hi guys and welcome back. I feel like it's been a little while since we've spent any time together. Um, lots of reasons that that has happened, but suffice it to say I'm back, I'm on track, and I'm super excited about quilting. Today on the blog, I've actually written up a quick post that talks about the five things that I wish I knew before I got started on my quilting journey. And I kind of think, you know, if I wanted to know those things, maybe you want to know them too. So we're going to touch on a couple of them here, and I'm going to drop the link below so that you know where to find the rest of the posts and you can check out all my tips. The first thing that we're going to talk about is actually fabric. Choosing your fabric can make the difference between a fabulous sewing experience and feeling like your project didn't come out quite the way you hoped it would. As a beginner quilter, there are a lot of choices out there and I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be as scary as it looks. Behind me you can see a couple of my latest projects and some old tried and true and sometimes the easiest way to get started is to keep it simple. What I love to do is create projects using pre-cuts. So things like charm packs or layer cakes, which of course these are the 10 inch squares, these are the five inch squares, or the jelly rolls. And these are two and a half inches wide, their width of fabric. And what I love about using products like this is these designers, they know what they're talking about and they know what fabrics go together. They know what's gonna look really good when you're finished. So I do like to buy several packs of these at one time because I never know what kind of project I'm gonna make with them. And sometimes you'll surprise yourself at what you do. This pillow up here, this is a four patch pillow that I've made recently. The, uh, the pattern is in my shop and I will drop a link to that. This pillow was made using a layer cake. Um, it's the Portsmouth by Amy Smart for Riley Blake Designs. It's so cute. So sometimes the easiest way to get started is to let somebody else do some of the work for you. Get the pre-cuts. There's nothing wrong with it. So speaking of using pre-cuts to make a project, you kind of wonder sometimes, well, what can I really do with these little tiny squares, right? A five inch square is so versatile. You can do so much with it. This little table runner that I made, it's actually two feet square. So I'll just show you really quick. This is made using charms. So the charms are the individual pieces inside of a charm pack. This, I blended two different charm packs together. So, so this one is a collection from Moda, and these are just whites. And so all I did was mix and match two charm packs together. So I actually have enough left over from the charm packs to make a whole nother one of these. I found this fabric in my stash, and it was a quick and easy afternoon project. Sometimes having a quick win like that can make a really big difference for you because quilting can feel overwhelming. It can feel huge. It can feel like you you just, there's too much. And finishing a small, simple project like this, it's definitely the way to go when you're just starting out. Okay, so I wanna spend a couple of minutes talking about tools. Just like the fabric, there's a lot of tools out on the market. A lot of them are nice to have and some of them are critical. Now. Everybody has their different style, and so take it for what it is. But these are the tools that I find the most essential, and you may or may not agree. I would actually love to hear in the feedback below what do you consider your most essential tool that maybe I didn't share. So the one that everybody recognizes, of course, is the self-healing mat. I do have a couple of different sizes. I like 
a little one like this just to keep next to my sewing machine to trim corners and things like that. I do have the larger eight, uh, 24 by 36 so that I'm cutting, you know, for cutting my strips and that sort of thing. That's an absolute must. To go along with that, of course, is the rotary cutter. These come in lots of different sizes depending on the intricacy of the cuts. Sometimes scissors are absolutely necessary, but when you're doing strips and squares and probably most of your triangles, the rotary cutter is what you're going to want. Of course, to go with your rotary cutter, you're going to want your rulers. So the clear rulers, of course, allow you to get your angles just right. These are, you know, you buy them once and you're going to have them forever. I also have a long one that is a non-slip, which really helps when you're cutting those long strips. You don't have to worry about your ruler going too wobbly. Something else that I just discovered recently after watching a lot of videos is clips. I love the clips instead of pins. I can't tell you how many times I've poked myself with a pin, and I've broken needles with pins because I've been sewing too fast and I just don't notice them. These clips are fantastic. You can find them in pretty much every fabric or quilting store. Um, you can find them online at Amazon. You can probably even get them at Walmart. The other piece that I don't have sitting right in front of me is a sewing machine. Choose the type of machine that fits your budget, that fits your comfort level, and that fits the projects that you think you're going to do. If you're not going to do a lot of embroidery, then maybe you don't need that machine. But if you are going to be making a lot of large pieces, then maybe you want a machine that's designed for quilting, has the larger throat, is a bit more heavy duty. Take the time to read product reviews, learn about the machines that you're interested in, talk to other quilters, ask them what they use, and find what works for you. Most shops will allow you to go in and test out a machine before you actually purchase it because they usually are a really big investment. So those are a couple of my basic tips for quilting for beginners. Pay attention to your fabric, pay attention to your tools, and make sure you're having fun. I'm going to leave a link down below that gives you the post that covers the rest of my tips. You'll want to pop over there. And there is a link inside that post as well to get a free pattern for my table runner. So go ahead and check that out. Any other products that I've talked about in this video, I'll definitely drop a link below. And I'll see you next time.